Thank you, thank you. Do you know, it was Saturday just gone. It was 6 p.m. at home. I'd cut the grass. I was thinking about having a drink, and the phone rings. It's Steve Bannon. He says, could you come to Alabama tomorrow? Because we'd like you to push your voice behind a true, genuine conservative in the shape of Judge Roy Moore. And I had to think about it. I had to think about it. Do you know it took me a whole 10 seconds to decide to drop everything and come here to be with you this evening. And I came all this way because what is going on here with this vote tomorrow isn't just important for Alabama. It isn't just important for the Republican Party. It isn't just important for the United States of America. It's important for the whole global movement across the West that we have built up and we have fought for. And a movement and a movement that led the year of 2016 into being the great historic year that it was. You know, in 100 years to come, 200 years to come, people will look back on 2016 as the year when ordinary people, decent people, ignored people, people who've been despised by the political establishment decided in 2016, you know what? We've had enough, and we're going to start voting for change. And we did it, didn't we? We did it. We did it. We, in the United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom, we overturned the direction that our political class and liberal media had taken us in for 50 years and we voted against all the lies we'd been told by the big businesses. We voted, and we voted against President Obama, daring to tell America's best ally in the world that we'd be at the back of the line. And we voted Brexit. We voted Brexit. And if that wasn't enough, if that wasn't enough, to give the global liberal media severe indigestion. <laughs> then a few months later, something happened on the 8th of November in the United States of America that has made them feel pretty sick ever since, and that was the election of Donald J. Trump. But folks, a year on from those great victories, we are facing some very considerable problems. The liberal media now hate anybody with conservative values in a way that I don't think we've ever seen before. There are others on the left, there are others on the left who are turning increasingly away from democratic process and towards violent, unpleasant, nasty protest. We see some on the left who now even want to rewrite history, tear down statues, and pretend we're different people to who we are. We see an attempt through the educational system, through our colleges and universities, to stop teaching young people that in a democracy there are two respectable sides to an argument, as they try to shout down and drown out those of us that believe in conservative values. We have real problems. The establishment, a year on, are doing all they can to undo those great successes of 2016. And we have to stand firm and be of resolve. We have to go on fighting. But, but there is a problem that is even greater than the violent left-wing protesters 
and their supporters, or those at least that turn a blind eye to them in the liberal media. We have an even bigger problem out there, and that problem are those people who in theory purport to support our aims and purport to support our views. Our problem is that so many people who are part of the conservative movement on both sides of the pond are in fact career politicians, yes. dominated, dominated by what is in their own interests. And they know, they know the closer they stay to the big banks and the multinational corporations, the less they cause offence to some in the media, the better their own career prospects may be. We have a problem with Brexit that so many in the Conservative Party, despite being elected on a ticket of delivering Brexit, now seek to delay it, now seek to water it down, now seek to try to pretend it hadn't happened. And you in America have exactly the same problem with members of Congress elected on a Republican ticket and yet, and yet doing their damnedest to stop the President from getting his agenda through. It's an enemy within. It's an enemy within. And that is why, and that is why, that is why I have absolutely no hesitation in putting my support and my backing behind a man like Judge Roy Moore, who has shown in his career, who has shown in his career that he will always put principle before his own career advancement. He is not, he is not going to be sucked into the swamp. He is not going to be beholden to anybody. It is getting someone like him elected that will rejuvenate the movement that led to Trump and Brexit and all of those great things happening in 2016. So we need this to happen tomorrow. And people are supporting him because they want President Trump's agenda to succeed and he's the best man to deliver it, isn't he? So let's send that message out. Send that message out to a sceptical media. The point about getting Judge Roy Moore is to help the President, isn't it? I couldn't hear you. It's to help the President, isn't it? Absolutely. Good, good, good. So it's now up to you. You've got to do what you can. You've got to fill your motor cars tomorrow. You've got to get your friends and family. You've got to get them out to vote. You've got to make it happen. And I wish you Godspeed. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, This book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, 
Military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you, Alabama. Thank you. Listen, I got a question. Why is the world's media here today? Like Nigel said, why, why are they here? Why are the Financial Times of London, the, uh, the BBC, NHK? You know why? Because tomorrow's going to decide who has sovereignty in the United States of America. Is it the elites in Washington, D.C. with their money, or is it the people at Alabama with their muscle? Mitch McConnell and this permanent political class is the most corrupt and incompetent group of individuals in this country. Let's have a serious discussion of what's going on here in Alabama. They've raised $30 million to Judge Moore's, what, two or three? And they've spent $30 million. They did not come down here to Alabama to have a reasoned discussion with you, to have a debate with you to have any kind of talk about the issues of immigration, the issues of trade, anything that's important today, America's commitments throughout the world. What they did is spend $30 million to destroy a man. Now, is that money gonna work? They didn't even have, they didn't have enough smarts to do it in a sophisticated manner. They took out 30 second TV spots. You know why? Because they think you're a pack of morons. They think you're nothing but rubes. They have no interest at all in what you have to say, what you have to think, or what you want to do. And tomorrow, you're gonna get an opportunity to tell them what you think of the elites that run this country. <laughs> Remember, these are the same people that have tried to destroy Donald J. Trump from the first day he announced for office. At $30 million, Versus three, it's a spending of 10 to one. And by the way, for Mitch McConnell and, uh, and Ward Baker and Carl Rove and Stephen Law, all the instruments to try to destroy Judge Moore and his family, your day of reckoning is coming. But more important, for the donors who put up the money and the corporatists that put up the money, your day of reckoning is coming too. Yeah. You, you got to remember something here, folks. This is a business model that works. The corporatist, donor, consultant, K Street, lobbyist, influence peddler, politician class. Washington, D.C., seven of the nine richest counties in the country surround it. Since the first time of the discovery of the silicon chip, the per capita income in Washington, D.C. is higher than Silicon Valley. It's a business model that works, because every year they get to spend $4.2 trillion of your money that's going to be a burden on your kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids. These folks are uh, 
at very good. They, they do one thing right. They know the price of everything, but the value of nothing. And they know the value, excuse me, the price of Luther Strange. It's $30 million. They weighed and measured Luther Strange. And at the end of the day, it was $30 million that bought him. He sits there and treats you like a bunch of fools. He says, I'm going to Washington, D.C. to stand up to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell owns him lock, stock, and barrel. Now, now people have asked, um, you know, why Sarah Palin and, and Phil Robertson and Nigel Farage and, and, and Mark Levin and Mark Meadows and, and, and Dr. Savage, uh, I could go on and on, Laura Ingram, right? On and on and on of the people that support Judge Moore and not the candidate that Donald Trump is uh, backing. Well, that, that takes a moment of reflection. Remember, all the people I named are not sunshine patriots. They've been with Donald Trump from the beginning. These are the hardest core backers of Donald Trump with no give up. I'm here as a private citizen today, not as the CEO of the campaign. I haven't worn this jacket since we're on the campaign. I came to you unshaven, unkempt, in this old bomber jacket, exactly like I was on the campaign. All of the folks I, I talked about are the hardest core supporters of Donald Trump, and I apologize to Plutarch and to Shakespeare as I do a riff on him, but we did not come here to defy Donald Trump. We came here to praise and honor him. The opposition party right there, the media, they're nothing but the running dogs of the elites of this world. Just like Judge Roar Moore, they, were, they didn't come for Donald Trump to have a discussion about immigration. They didn't come and have a discussion about trade. They didn't have a discussion about America's place in the world. No, they were out to destroy Donald Trump personally. Yeah. Donald Trump has billions of dollars. He was almost 70 years old. He has a lovely wife, terrific kids, friends that you just can't imagine the friends this guy has. He had the perfect life. And why did Donald Trump, at almost the age of 70, run for president of the United States? I saw him up close. It was not for any glory. It was not for any kind of adulation. Donald Trump ran for president of the United States because of his duty to this country. <laughs> Donald Trump is one of the most courageous individuals I've ever seen, and I've seen it up close. When they try to destroy him every day, it wasn't a debate about his policies. It was about the politics of personal destruction. And every day in Washington, D.C., it's the same thing. How tough do you think it is to get his agenda? Now, we got, a, we got a cute phrase, drain the swamp, okay? But the enemy we face is not cute. And we're not going to do it with slogans. We're just not going to do it because we wish it away. You're going to have to fight every day to take Washington back, and by taking Washington back, take the control of your own lives back. Every person in this country should get down every night and thank God Donald Trump is President of the United States. You know, I was CEO of the campaign. I came into 88 days to go. We were down 16 points. We were losing in every battleground state, and we won. And you know why? We laid out a populist, nationalist, conservative message. Populist because it's anti-elite. Because those fools in Davos and Washington, D.C. are totally incompetent and corrupt. Nationalists because we're anti-globalists. We believe in America first, and what's good for this country is good for its citizens. And conservative because we totally reject the progressive movement and what it stands for. Yes. 
They talk about hate speech. Let's talk about economic hate crimes that have been done on the working men and women in this country. They've gutted this country. They've gutted in manufacturing jobs and shipped them overseas. You know what for? For profit. You think this opioid crisis just came about? There's a direct correlation between the factories and jobs that were shipped to China and the workers left behind with total despair. I saw in this campaign, the way we won was we had a candidate that was the greatest public speaker since William Jennings Bryant, Donald J. Trump. And we had, we had a lot of common sense of where we had to go and audiences like you in Ohio and Iowa and Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. We did something nobody ever thought could be done. A conservative candidate could win the upper Midwest. But we won it in over 300 electoral votes. But I will tell you, on the day of November 8th, I knew it was divine providence to help us win. And if you think of something else that's providential, think about tomorrow. This is Jeff Sessions' seat that we're gonna fill. Jeff Sessions, the son of Alabama. He's one of the finest men I've ever met. He's pure of heart and tough as boot leather. He is a man with the most integrity in Washington, D.C. He's also a man that Mitch McConnell and all of the elites, the permanent political class, despise. Because unlike Luther Strange, he can't be bought. There's no price that Jeff Sessions can be bought. I'm proud to call him my mentor. I'm proud to call him my brother. We have worked on this project for many, many years. Jeff Sessions is the spiritual father of this movement. He's the original populist and nationalist in this country, and we owe him a great debt of gratitude. The people in Alabama, I ask you tomorrow to keep that in mind when you walk into the voting booth. Remember whose seat that Judge Moore is gonna replace. It's Jeff Sessions, one of the most unique men, forget politicians, one of the most unique men in our country. Another unique man is Judge uh, Roy Moore. Now Judge Moore is not perfect, okay? Judge Moore does not claim to be perfect. Judge Moore rose a national prominence because he put the Ten Commandments for all to see. And, and, and according to these folks, according to the mainstream media, according to the global elites, that's virtually a capital crime. Now Judge Moore knows that the Ten Commandments is the basis of the Judeo-Christian West. And Judge Moore understands and knows that According to the Judeo-Christian West, man is imperfect. Judge Moore has never claimed anything else. And by the way, we're not always going to agree on every topic and every subject. Laura Ingram, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Dr. Savage, Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, Steve Bannon. We don't all agree on everything, but we agree on the basics. Judge Roy Moore is a good man, he's a courageous man, and most importantly, he's a righteous man. God bless Judge Moore, God bless Donald Trump and his family. God bless the United States of America. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. 
Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, This book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. This book teaches 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional that will change your life life and give you power. It comes with 15 inspiring true stories of political victory. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching, and we need your donations to stay on the air. Where else are you going to find exciting news and amazing interviews like the ones you just saw from a Christian perspective? Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, and please donate today. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 22, The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. If you need prayer, call us today at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today, I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today.